What's up? And we are back on the channel, working on the 240 again, and today we're doing a very, very big, important install on this car that will take this car to the next level of its uh, history, I guess. So, if you guys didn't know, the past few years I've been competing in clutch shakers, and it's been very competitive, and the car has evolved. It's something I never expected it to be, and there's a dog box in the car now, big boy 2JZ engine, a 1.5JZ engine, and uh, we've been running a stock diff in this car for a while and with the clutch delay valve the strongest stub you can use z axles and it's been actually holding up really really good but like with the new power we're going to have and the reliability and to be competitive we need to have gear changes in order to be faster more competitive and just all around just way easier to dial in the car now i'm kind of installing things backwards uh, in the off season because um engine still at the machine shop i'm waiting on an engine, a new engine harness and a few other parts so right now what i have is the winner's quick change with the subframe and i have to do a bunch of other stuff to the car to actually make it all work but i can get it in the car with all the suspension done and easy in the car that way we can save some time and not be last minute so first thing is we have to get the old subframe out of the car get all that stuff out and the whole entire under of my car has never been taken apart under my ownership i've never taken the subframe out i never had to and you don't really want to because it's a pretty big job so uh, first things first, get the car up, uh, get the old subframe out of there. I could just put the new one in, but like it's pretty gunky and nasty under there. And I really wanted to make it nice and scrape off all the old dirt, debris, and crap, and then paint it all nice and black. That way the new subframe goes in with the winner's quick change and it all looks nice, as well as all the new, well, semi-new uh, suspension parts we have on the current subframe we put on last year. So I want it to look nice, I want it to be clean because when you work on the car, you get dust in your eyes, dirt, gunk, and it's not fun. So while it's out, we're gonna clean it up, get it all fresh and clean, that way it looks nice. All right, so here we have our S13 subframe modified with our Warner's Performance uh, quick change. And uh, this diff is very, very strong. And uh, basically the point of it is to not break. And they're not indestructible, but they're very, very durable. And the change of gear ratio is very, very fast. And FD and teams I've worked on, um, I, I do gear changes on those cars within three to five minutes. All you do basically is pop off this cover right here. Um, one big gear, one small gear, and you can change the ratios whatever you want to be faster or have more wheel speed or less wheel speed or find your sweet spot to be competitive and have a really dialed car. Uh, wheel speed is very important in drifting and that's why we're doing this. And it'll be a whole entire game changer when we put this in the car. But uh, big thanks to John from Committed and Ricky Hoffman for organizing and getting the subframe uh, modified to the winner's performance uh, quick change. All nice and structural, super beefy, very, very strong. Uh, it'll be in there for a long time and it won't break. And Ricky has this exact same setup in his car and it's been very good so far. So uh, yeah, big thanks to John for committed again. If you need any fab work up in Jersey, up, up north, or a winner's performance subframe for your S chassis or BMW, whatever, whatever else you wanna do, uh, hit him up and uh, he'll do good work. And it's already done, big time saver. Next up, goes in the car, but like I said, we gotta drop the whole entire old subframe uh, scrape all the crap off into the car, make it nice, and uh, fit it in there. We might have to cut some part of the, of the chassis to fit this in there. I'm not sure yet, but uh, we'll see. I'm not sure how it's going to go, but <laughs> we gotta, we got to find out, I guess. All right, so under the car, it's pretty dirty. I've had, I really have not touched any of this other than swapping out a tank and putting your arms on this, different diffs, axles, all that kind of stuff. So uh, plan is to just drop this subframe, get it out of here, and then I'm pretty sure we're either gonna have to cut out the tub for the spare tire, the OEM spare tire location, and then we obviously cannot run uh, a stock field tank with the winner's quick change. You can, people have done it, but they literally have drained this out a hundred times, washed it with water, and welded and modified the stock tank because the end of the diff comes out to like, right over here so you don't want to do that i don't want to do that we are getting a fuel cell it's just not here yet but we're running out of time well, we have plenty of time but like i'm trying to beat the deadline by a mile because anything can happen so the goal is to get this out and probably have to take this out as well and then go from there and see what we have to take out and what fits and what doesn't so i already had the engine and drivetrain out, out of the car so basically all we had to do is uh, uh take the brake lines off Take off the two brackets and then uh, make sure the coilovers are off as well right here. That way all we're going to do is take out the four main bolts right here to the chassis from the subframe. Loosen those fourth impact and have both jacks on each side of the subframe. 
lower it slowly and we should be good to go. Uh, looking at it right now, like I said before, we definitely cannot run um, a stock tank because the, the brace right here is in the way, it's a whole bunch of stuff. But So once we get the subframe out, we'll drop the tank and then go from there, get the whole back end cleaned up nice and clean and then paint it, make it look nice and then get the subframe in there. Probably gonna have to grind or cut a little bit out the top up there, but we don't need that anyway, so it's all good. But it's going good so far. If you haven't dropped the subframe before in an S chassis or you're scared to, don't be. It's very, very easy. It's basically just a few lines and what turns on the car too. But for me, it's a few lines, exhaust, dry shaft, coils, and then four bolts and it's out. So pretty simple. Damn, first time this thing's been out of this car since I've owned this car. I have literally have not pulled this out since I've owned the car. That's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> wow. All crusty and nasty. The diff's been out of this car multiple times. Axles, arms, all that stuff, but never anything else. Cool. Sub frame's out. Now it's time to get it all the way over here, organize everything, and then start to uh, get the under of the car all nice and uh not crazy anymore there's a bunch of stuff in there we don't need anymore i want to make it nice and clean for the new setup and then we can go from there but next is uh all that pull a uh, fuel tank out and to keep on going a slight issue getting the tank out the uh the neck got caught up in there we kind of had to stop the time lapse and kind of kick it and get it out of there but now we have a bunch of room to do what we have to do and then we can continue on from here to get this thing nice and clean and uh ready for it's new look. Got the degreaser soaking out all this nasty gunk in here. This thing has never been cleaned since I've owned this car. So it's pretty nasty in here. So I'm soaking all this crap up, getting all the gunk out, prep it for paint, and then uh, paint it, get the subframe in here at the winners, and then see what we gotta do from there. <laughs> All right, we're under the car. We had to cut this whole entire thing out to fit this thing in here. I cut a little bit more than I did on purpose because I needed some extra space. But uh, we will be plating this from here all the way over and down. So keep that structural support in there. But for now, we're going to get the winners back in here and fit it and then go from there. Now, we are wire reeling the studs because the ISR bushings have very, very, very tight tolerances compared to my old bushings. So it's really annoying. You shouldn't have to do that. They should have enough room for you to, like, actually to just go in like my old bushings did it was cake this one's a lot harder because it's tighter so we have to get the little bit of a thousand of an inch off of paint off the stud to get the damn bushings in so we're doing that now come back to it i'm going to paint some stuff under here so it doesn't rust 
and then we'll get this uh, over the poles in a few weeks to get this thing uh, welded up. All right, so it's a few hours later. We got the whole under of the car all painted nice and black. Again, I painted everything so it doesn't rust back here, but everything under there is all painted now black, so it looks nice and refreshed with the new uh, subframe winners, all that stuff. Um, we will have uh, Paul block uh, this side and this side off, like I said. We'll plate it and then plate under here so it's more structural. And then to the fuel cell up next in the next few videos. So now it's finally time to get this winners into the car. We've been having issues getting it in with uh, these bushings and with these studs. But we uh, we wire wheeled the paint off of the studs. Hopefully that gives us more room to get this thing inside of the car. But we shouldn't have to do that because again, my old bushings have plenty of room, plenty of space to get in there. It makes it way easier. But these are way tighter. All right, let's finally get this thing in the car. All right, so we had a pretty big dilemma with this whole entire winter's uh, subframe going to the S chassis kind of thing. But it's in the car and we're finally in, all mounted up completely, all nice and brand new and painted in there and I'm very stoked on that. And I cut just the, amount, I cut just the right amount off to get that thing in there. So I am stoked on that. And uh, yeah, it's in, I am stoked. So now we have to get the whole entire rest of the subframe on and we wanted to put it on before going in the car, but like it, it would have been really annoying with what we dealt with because the, the subframe bushings, the holes were too small. So I drilled like two thousandths of an inch off the bushings and it went in perfectly. So not the thing I want to do, but like it actually worked perfect. So we're all good. Uh, but yeah, next up, get the whole entire suspension back on the car. And then after that, uh, get it back on the ground and continue on to the next step, which will probably be next video. But everything is in. If you're doing a winner's clip change in your S chassis, you have to cut out that center section and uh, the back end of the car as in like the spare field, the spare tire um, section and a, and a hatch or a coupe. So, um, and you have to do fuel cell. And there's people that have moved their fuel sock tank back, but like it makes the weight all over the place and there's no room to change the gears and you don't want that. So unfortunately, if you want to do a winners, you got to do fuel cell for sure. And you can also do it back here, but then you the weights all over the place, like I said. So I'm putting mine directly on top up there and then the weight will be right over the diff for more grip and better weight distribution. So, um, yeah, next up, get all the suspension back on and go from there. So, got the first driver's side almost all the way on, just missing the lower control arm. I'm, making, I'm painting that, making that all brand new again, and the bushings were absolutely shot. Uh, well, the, the not the bushings, the ball joint was shot. We have brand new bushings in there already, but the ball joint was shot, so we're replacing that, painting it, making it look nice in here. And I do have the Z-axle in there, so that's a little hint of what I'm going to be dealing with the winners. So it's going to be pretty cool and a much better budget way to have a uh, winners in your drift car. So that's coming up in the next few videos, but right now it's getting this all in there. So when the new stuff comes in to mate the uh, axles to the winners quick change, that will be all ready to go and done so. So step by step, but one side's almost done. Now continue on to the next side and go from there. This video is not going to be very focused on putting this on, just the winners getting in the car. So at least I'm showing some progress and uh, getting a video out for you guys because I've been very busy. And it's really hard to get videos out now, so we will continue on and go from there. All right, guys, the whole entire rear end is in the car. Every arm, all the new PBM stuff with the winner's quick change, and it's officially in the car. I am so stoked. It wasn't a lot of work, but I took the time to paint some stuff and get it nice, do some new bushings on the little control arms. And then next up is now to get measurements for the drive shaft once the motor goes in. But again, in this video, we're just getting this thing installed and cut some stuff out to fit it. This video will probably end close to here because the next video will be us uh, doing some other stuff with the uh, cover for the back here, fuel cell, fuel system, all that kind of stuff. For the most part, the winner's quick change is in. I'm going to get this new hardware for the back cover, a new back cover, and all that kind of stuff, but it looks awesome. Again, in the shot here from the back, everything on, all nice and new looking, no more nasty, dirty crap under here. It's so much better to work on because before I would grease and old very old dirt back here and it was just terrible but uh this video wasn't all over the place but like I, like I said i had some issues with the bushings and it pushed me back a little bit on time but we finally got it in today the bc racing er series cool overs in there as well now we can actually run them up here and then tie into the cage that way we can adjust our uh, dampening uh through the window right there and be much easier than having to go under the car like before so this whole entire car is going to be so much better for me and the team and the car will be another level this year 
So, like I said, I've been very, very busy with work and stuff and getting this year planned. I have a lot of parts coming in. The motor just got done in the machine shop. I have to go get it. We can finally get that motor built, get into the car, and then uh, start tagging this thing up. So next video, we'll do the whole entire new Dishworks fuel system with a new performance fuel cell. And then after that, it's probably motor build, uh, install the motor, and then get all the drivetrain in, and then a new wiring harness is coming in. Uh, the wiring harness is like a few weeks out, so it might be a little bit, but it's probably the last thing we're going to do. But other than that, like this car's coming together kind of quick, way faster than I expected. But uh, I am going to do an interesting axle setup on this car. As you guys saw, I did leave the Z axles in there. And the setup I'm going to be using is going to be uh, Z axles with a, an adapter to the winner's quick change. Now I know it sounds kind of funny to do cheap axles on a winner's quick change, but drive shaft shop axles are very expensive and they do break and they're really annoying to deal with. So I'd rather just do some Z axles, try and see if they work. If they don't work, we go to the next step and go from there. But I want to try it. It's doable. You actually use two driver side Z axles. It's a perfect length with the adapters to the winners and ass chassis. So that is going to be up in a few videos as well. But the parts are being custom made and all that kind of stuff that takes a while. But it's coming, guys. I'm doing my best. I know I have not been posting a lot and it sucks. I'm trying to get back in the groove and I'm trying to get back to normal to get more videos out. But like, I'm so busy. I wish I could do YouTube full time. One day I'm hoping to make that happen. But. Sometimes like it's in the way and you have to use this step to get to that step. But we are cruising along. The winners is in the car. I'm so freaking stoked. It's a dream come true to have a dog box winners freaking built Jay-Z drift car. That's really freaking cool to me. So I'm stoked. I uh, hope you guys are stoked too. Uh, I'm tr I try to make the video informal, but like it's, there's not much to it. If you got a custom subframe mounted up to it, just going to cut some stuff out, put it in there and make it work. So that is what we did. We are done with this video. Once again, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys very soon.